Have you ever heard of the four color theorem? It's a concept that states that any map divided between a lot of regions only needs four colors to fill in the whole map, so that no regions with the same color are right next to each other. I'm sure that every geopolitics nerd's ears opened as soon as I said the word map, so does this also work on a world map? Well, yes, of course. Or does it? When maps are colored in, we usually expect that one color is used for a whole country. It's why Alaska and the lower 48 states are both blue on this map, despite them not being connected to each other. But when regions are not contiguous, we can throw the four color theorem out the window. Let me introduce you to St. Martin, an island in the Caribbean split up between France and the Netherlands. This border means that those two nations definitely border each other, even if they don't in Europe. So they need two different colors. Belgium and Germany border each other, as well as both of these countries. So they need two different colors as well. But this is fine, right? The four color theorem is still intact after all. Wrong! The sea is technically a region on the world map, and since none of these four are landlocked, we need a fifth color. But I know what you're thinking. The sea is a sea. It should not count. Okay, fine. Let's consider a hypothetical. The Netherlands invades Germany and fully occupies it. Yes, this is going somewhere. In the peace deal, the Dutch annexed the German region of rhineland Palatinate. Now, the Netherlands borders Luxembourg, which also borders the other three. Five countries now border each other, therefore, we need a fifth color. But I know what you're thinking. St. Martin is like all the way over there. It should not count. Doesn't matter. Rhineland Platinum not only borders Luxembourg, but France as well. And the same applies if the Netherlands were to annex the Saarland instead. All five of them still border each other, so a fifth color is necessary. Well? This is exactly why the four color theorem only works when the regions are contiguous. So, can we truly say that it works on a world map? Eh, maybe. What we created in the Saarland is known as an exclave, and while there are currently no exclaves in the world that could mess up the four color theorem, you can see that they have the possibility to do so. Anyways, what does all that have to do with the topic of this video? Oh, nothing. I just needed a segue into talking about exclaves. Exclaves are actually stupid. I love them. They're the biggest troll in geopolitics ever. Like, oh, you wanted this piece of code for sea access? Well, too bad. There's at least one Croatian in there and he's calling the shots. Okay, look, it's not funny when it affects me. An exclave is a piece of territory that's separated from the main part and is surrounded by territory of other states. Now, I had the audacity to call them boring at the end of the last video, but I don't actually think that's true. I just said it wrong. Don't worry, this isn't the first time I'm stupid. I was born to be. No, what's boring is how people treat exclaves. The way in which people usually find out about them is in a sort of fun facty way, either through a video or a website or something. Like, wow, look at Belgium and the Netherlands. This sure is a pretty wacky border, isn't it? <laughs> and then you never think about it ever again. No. I am tired of this ex-slander. Ex-slaves are so much more interesting than number 15, United Arab Emirates. The last thing you'd want in your nation is an exclave within an exclave within an exclave within an exclave. Let us push the boundaries of what can be considered an exclave, shall we? semi exclaves spenny exclaves divided islands, subnational exclaves, ethnic enclaves that enclaves? Okay, so apparently there's also this thing called an enclave, which is when a territory is completely surrounded by another. But like, that's just an exclave with extra steps. The only national enclaves that aren't exclaves are the Suthu, San Marino, and Vatican City. Every other national enclave is also an exclave. Like, come on, can you really claim that Monaco, the Gambia, and Brunei are enclaves just because they only border one country? By that logic, Haiti and the Dominican Republic enclave each other. That's mathematically impossible. But what about the territorial waters? What about the territorial waters? You'd probably think that the name The Good would go to what's known as True Exclaves, the ones that are completely surrounded by territory of other states. But the problem with True Exclaves is that the people have to pass through a different country to get back to their own country. That's tricky. This makes semi exclaves a lot better because they have the advantage of also bordering a sea. So it's not necessary to travel through a different country, you can just take a boat there. So while True Exclaves are annoying, semi exclaves are strategic assets. Take Kaliningrad for example, the one that I joked about earlier and a part of Russia, giving them the ability to cut off the Baltic states from the rest of NATO by capturing the Suwak gap between the exclave and Russian ally Belarus. Kaliningrad would be a lot less useful to Russia if it were a true exclave located inside of Poland. Or at least that's what West Berlin has taught us. Now, Kaliningrad was populated by ethnic Russians after World War II, which is why Lithuania refused a transfer of the territory to them while both were under the USSR. But this isn't the norm, because most semi-exclaves exist thanks to colonialism. Let's look at this map, for example. According to my calculations that are definitely objective and not pulled out of thin air, about 10% of you nerds have already figured out that it's about which country each country shares along its border with. As for France, this is Brazil. Oh, you silly little map, Brazil is all the way over there. So what's going on over here? Oh god, it's a tumor! Shoot it! Many European empires came to the Guianas in South America because of their lucrative plantations, but eventually, Portugal left, Spain left, Britain left, the Netherlands left, and France. 
stayed. But as you may expect, this didn't come without fierce resistance from French Guiana, who fought valiantly for their independence during the Cold War. Just kidding, they got a lot of money, so there's no need for independence. Sticking with France has allowed them to generally be more comfortable than the countries that surround them, doing better on the Human Development Index than their neighbors, and utterly destroying all of South and Latin America with their average monthly wage of the population. So French Guiana is a full-fledged department of France, alongside their other overseas territories. According to the law, French Guiana is just as French as Paris is, but probably even a little more because of all the immigrants. <laughs> Oh come on, that was a good joke! Oh yeah, and if we're talking about colonialism, we can't forget Africa. Equatorial Guinea is one you might know for being very square-shaped, but did you know that their capital is actually located on this island? This means that the island is the main part of the country, while the square is by definition an exclave. 93% of Equatorial Guinea is an exclave. Like imagine if I was 93% an exclave, this video would be unwatchable. I'd find now we can talk about true exclaves. Considering that many of these are small and don't have an airport, you are gonna have to beg someone to let you in and out. A lot of these exclaves are, once again, Europe's fault. When the smorgasbord of little European entities were integrated into the emerging nation-states in the early modern period, some entities said, No, 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 stop, you cannot legally take me over without my consent, which mostly failed, but seeing as there are still a couple European microstates, it did succeed in some areas. But some of these territories that fell into the hands of nation-states weren't necessarily connected to these nation-states. Thankfully for them, though, the Schengen area allows most of the people in the exclaves to go to the main part, without having to give them name, occupation, and whether or not they follow the rule of tincture or not. But some areas don't have this advantage, such as what the heck happened here unlike European true exclaves which just sort of appeared accidentally out of complicated treaties this was a deliberate divide and conquer strategy by the Soviet Union to make the Soviet republics of Uzbekistan Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan fight each other over the valuable Fergana Valley these three don't have an equivalent to the Schengen area so getting in and out of these exclaves can be difficult and while they've thankfully been able to avoid war so far it could break out at literally any moment seeing the violence that has already occurred in these areas Borders of the countries, like with eyes are the humans. They have them. Wow, that's so offensive. True exclaves are just a pain to deal with if the countries beneath it and the mainland aren't cooperative. Wanna enter Nakhchivan from Azerbaijan? You gotta take a plane. Wanna enter the Gaza Strip from Palestine? You gotta get visas from both Israel and Egypt. Wanna enter Stok from Uzbekistan? No! And that's why they deserve the moniker of the bad. But at least we can still look at Schengen. It's so beautiful that my eyes magically regenerate because I need them to, to convey certain emotions that will allow me to keep the viewer retention rate high. Nothing to see here. I'd call that back. So what are we talking about next? Okay, well who needs eyes anyways? Thankfully, these eye-shattering borders between India and Bangladesh don't exist anymore, but that's a scary example of what drawing borders based on ethnicity can result in. What a stupid idea. Who would ever think of drawing borders based on ethnicity? Wow, a person like that must be really in-depth when it comes to history. But perhaps ethnicity can explain why Central Asia looks like this. After all, if Azerbaijan got a big ex for where Azeris lived while being under the Soviet Union, then maybe the same applies here. Let's give Stok another chance and see if we can explain why it's an exclave. Wow, that somehow made things more confusing. Impressive. Okay, no, this won't work. I need a pair of eyes. Hey, EBM, do you have a spare set of eyes? Do you have a... Can I just borrow yours? Thanks. But the border between India and Bangladesh is not the focus of this section. Instead, it's about enclaves. Uh... More specifically, it's those ethnic enclaves that I mentioned at the start, which don't really take national borders into consideration. So no, the former India-Bangladesh border did not have ethnic enclaves. These are just enclaves that were drawn because of ethnicity. Totally different. An ethnic enclave is an area within a state with a high concentration of a certain ethnic group that's completely surrounded by another ethnic group. These ones are often much smaller than all the exclaves and enclaves we've talked about before. For example, Manhattan has a couple small neighborhoods called Chinatown, Little Italy, Koreatown, Little Germany, and Spanish Harlem. Take a guess as to which ethnic groups live there. Ethnic enclaves like these are especially important in the United States because of the electoral college voting system. The US population has about 18.7% Latino Americans and about 12.1% African Americans. Being much more geographically concentrated in the Deep South, and Latino Americans are everywhere else, their voice usually have more weight. But I don't know, I'm sure that someone who's actually knowledgeable on American politics can correct me if I'm wrong. Hey hey, let me ask you something immediately. Was this video okay? Do you want to see more funny stuff like this, or should I just focus on informational stuff? I don't know, you let me know. Anyways, the next video will be a follow-up to the Every Flag Explained video, this time about US states. It's gonna be, like, two hours long, I'm sure. Alright, see ya.